blood-winged butterflies operate in the Empire's shadows. Not even the Abbey knows their full scope beyond whispers and rumor. And you all have a connection to them, don't you? Dark and interconnected is the Underworld. We've heard voices in the shadows, glimpsed faces behind paper-thin masks. The attack on High Priest Gideon. Was that at their behest? Yeah, the Bloodwings asked us to take him out. We did it in exchange for information that could lead us to Artorias. Information? You would assassinate a man for mere information? Yes. Information on the Shepherd who rules the world. Not a bad deal if you ask me. We just work with them when our interests align. Nothing more. That's the kind of thin justification I'd expect to hear from them, too. But the Bloodwings were acting upon knowledge that the High Priest was harming the people of the city. You're right. The incident with the Nectar was the Church's failing. And it seems that the Bloodwing Butterfly Network goes further and deeper than we had thought. They knew about the barrier at the throne, too. And Velvet's expertise at Dove Mimicry. <sighs> Would you stop bringing that up? Dove Mimicry? What does that mean? I have no idea. There was a dove near the dock checkpoint. That's all. Huh? Right! It was a black, full-chested dove, wasn't it? Cuckoo! A black, full-chested dove? Is that some sort of underworld code word? Here we are, back in Logris. It was a lot tougher to get in the first time. <laughs> More funny than tough, if you ask me. Oh, you mean Velvet's little dove act? Coo coo! I'd be careful teasing her if I were you. You know how she can get. Oh, don't act like you didn't enjoy it too. I'm sure you did, right? Good little boys don't lie to adults, you know. I might have... just a little... Say it like a dove. It was funny. Coo coo! Zinominot's book so difficult? Grimoire seemed perplexed by it. Yeah. She said it was written in ancient Avarost, a language that uses Impressionist script. I've never heard of Impressionist script. Each character can have many different meanings and readings, depending on the emotion it's expressing and the way it relates to the characters around it. Some modest records on its grammar and structure survive but none that say how to read the emotion the characters express. Grimoire said that you have to recreate the writer's feelings as a sort of starting point in order to read it. I see. And you have a talent for that sort of thing? I guess I do. But a script based on emotions? That's as far removed from modern language as can be. Yeah. It's completely unrelated, apparently. How can it be completely unrelated? After the temperance of Avarost, the entirety of human civilization vanished. The language went with it. Much as a blooming flower loses its petals, the Avaros civilization grew too far and came to its final end. The surviving buildings and ancient tools, the likes of which our technology cannot replicate, were the beginning of that end. In any case, it sounds like deciphering that writing will take quite a while. I'm a 
sure is big. Yeah, with historical buildings and artisans and all, there's much of interest here for a boy who loves to learn. Uh-huh. Sightseeing's nice and all, but don't wander off and get lost. Oh yeah, sorry. Don't worry about him. He can take care of himself. I know, I was just saying. Eleanor, I need you to wait outside. The boss of the Bloodwings knows an exorcist is with us, but... Say no more. I'm sure they have clients who wouldn't appreciate their faces being known to the Abbey. Correct. Lafayette, you stay with Eleanor. Okay. I'll be back soon. My thanks for coming all this way. It's been a while. Would you care for a peach pie? What do you want? Oh. It would do you good to unwind every now and again, you know. Stretch a bow too far and its string is bound to snap. What do you want? <sighs> I would like you to escort this person out of the capital. Something smells about this. Literally. Where am I taking them? Somewhere the authorities can't reach them. Sounds nice. I could do with such a place myself. No joke. We've been looking for a place to lay low, but we haven't had any luck yet. Well, come to think of it, I've heard a rumor that it's been a while since the Abbey has had any contact from Titania. Prison Island. Titania? But I thought the Abbey was in direct control of that place. Has the situation there gotten that bad since you left? Sometimes the answer is right under your nose. I think it might work. Yeah, could make a decent hideout, actually. The Therians could definitely get their fill of malevolence there. And the Abbey is far too goody-goody to imagine an escaped prisoner would ever return to her prison by her own free will. At the very least, I'd say it's worth checking out. I take it our intel has proven useful? It has. But before we go, have you heard anything about the Abbey harboring demons? I'm aware there was a demon in the villa, and that it has been relocated. Where? I can't say right this moment, but I'm sure we will find out shortly. All right, then in exchange for this passenger's safety, I want more information on that demon. You've got a deal. Aizen, I heard about your confrontation with Melchior. I'm sorry I wasn't able to help you find him. Yeah, he really blew that one, toots. It's fine. What's done is done. 
Have you given up on finding Eifried? No, I haven't. The crew and I will do whatever we can to quash the Abbey's plans. We do them enough damage, and the Abbey ought to start thinking about putting their hostage to good use. They'll set him up as a trap for us, and that's when we'll steal him back. Attacking the Abbey to create an opening for his escape. Clever. It's what Ifri would do. That's all. They're taking a while. Yeah. The Shepherd has a special mission for you. You are to protect the Malak Lafiset and bring him to the Logris Abbey headquarters. <laughs> What's wrong? Hey, you want to take a walk around the capital for a bit? I can show you some of the sights. But, um... You... You can't trust me. I understand. No, it's not that. I promise. I'd love to go sightseeing with you, Eleanor. Luffy said. Uh, well, we'll do it another time, okay? Why? It's just, you know, Velvet would get mad at us. Get mad about what? Ah, you're done. And who is this? A VIP entrusted to us by the head of the Blood Wings. We're stowing them away on Titania where the bad guys can't get at them. The prison island? Just who is this person? Didn't ask. What? <sighs> hey, something smells nice. Uh, uh huh? <laughs> Stop sniffing things. We're leaving. you take a job without bothering to ask who you're escorting or why the less you know the less trouble you invite who is that caped man i do not know but his hawk seemed extraordinarily well trained trained to hunt maybe i'd imagine it takes a great deal of time and money to train a bird like that <laughs> what is it i smell something nice <laughs> indeed the scent is somehow familiar. <laughs> it can't be. Hmm? What are you two sniffing at? Aha! They're bloodhounds on the hunt! But we're talking about hawks hunting, aren't we? Come again? Oh, I'm sorry. Please excuse my poor manners. <laughs>
This is bull crap. You're gouging us just because you can. Well, if you want to pay less, maybe you should go find someone more generous, hmm? Looks like they're at it again. for supplies, and... Tell you what. I'll give you a fair price. Actually, just take what you need. <clears throat> we should all endeavor to help contribute to the common good of humanity, rather than selfishly pursue wanton profit. What? Uh, are you sure? Uh... uh yeah. No! Wait, what was I saying? You felt that too, didn't you, kiddo? Yeah, it disappeared, but I felt a strong force coming from somewhere to the north. It's called a domain, a Moloch's zone of influence. Wait, if it's north of here, then... The Empyrean's throne? Did that happen because of something Inominat and Artorius did? I don't know. I've got a bad feeling about this. We should get far away from here, and quickly. So... the suppression... Well, that was certainly off-putting, but our job with Tabitha comes first, and we need a hideout suit. And two. True enough. All right, we're safely on the rolling waves. Don't you think it's time you showed us your face, mystery monk? <laughs> You're right. My apologies. I knew it! Prince Percival! Percival Ilmid Asgard. Crowned prince and heir to the throne of the Midgan Kingdom. So he's next in line, is he? It looks like someone already had me figured out. Yes, Your Highness. I could tell from your fragrant wood scent, as only the royal family may wear it. But if I may ask, why? Must I explain myself to gain your aid? I myself could ask what an exorcist is doing consorting with members of the underworld. I... I don't... It doesn't matter why you're here. On this ship, you're here for us to use to our advantage. Treat me as you will. It's not like I can ever go back. For a fellow born with silver spoons spewing out of his mouth, Princey Pooh is rather laid back. Prince Percival is an upstanding man, renowned for both his intelligence and his fair, just demeanor. It's widely believed that with him on the throne, Midgan's prosperity will continue and... Look, I played dumb earlier, but I smelled that scent too. He wore it for us to notice. He wanted us to know just what sort of position he held, and how useful he could be to us. He surprised me, at least. Do you think we're being led into another trap? We definitely can't take that possibility off the table. When the time comes, he'll make a good hostage, if nothing else. Not if the ones we face are after his life, too. For now, let's just make sure we keep an eye on him. The Prince... He said he couldn't go back. I wonder why. a prison. It's like a secret fort or something. Weirdly quiet, though. Yeah, I don't see a single exorcist on watch. 
<laughs> Let's scope out the inside. An exorcist. Are you all right? Headless knights. She's dead. The Headless Knight is back? Think this is the demon that attacked her? Hmm, another prison riot? Kurogane, dial. You two protect Kamoana and the Prince. Understood. Destruction! <laughs> You're giving me a headache. Oh, Stay sharp! This one must have survived the riot! Stop! Get to No mercy! Wounds that will be in Did you think you could escape me? So did the Abbey actually fail to quell the riot? I find that hard to believe. The prison was heavily staffed with exorcists. Perhaps it was venomization. Venomization? A dark ritual, forcing demons to eat each other in order to produce ever stronger demons. So the demons devoured each other, creating a demon too powerful for the exorcists to control? I imagine the riot didn't help. Now whose fault could that have been, I wonder? Whatever happened doesn't matter to us now. We need to focus on how to take this place for ourselves. That exorcist from before said something about a headless knight, right? That one's probably the leader. Then we hunt it down and destroy it. Until we capture the island, let's use this room for our staging ground. I'll leave the prince and Kamoana to you two. Eliminate any enemies who come in. Understood. Don't expect much from me, but all right. Kamoana. If anything happens, call for me and I'll come running to protect you, okay? Okay. You stay safe too, Eleanor. Let's go. reeks with malevolence. I imagine it's emanating from all the big old demons roaming about.
It's you again. Ah, I'm so busy! I'm so busy I can't even notice what's going on around me! You're not fooling anybody. Why bother? I was hoping to not have to deal with you guys. Whenever I run into you, I always lose so much monies. Because Velvet always forces unreasonable demands on you? Oh, Miss Exorcist! Your concern warms my little turtle's heart. I'm not forcing anything. I just think he's trying to take advantage of us by fixing his prices well above market rate. Price fixing? As in deliberately marking up items so as to take advantage of the less fortunate? I was under the impression that the Abbey strictly forbade such unscrupulous business tactics. Ah! Perish the thought, Miz! Our accounting is always above board. 25 hours a day, 8 days a week! No matter when's and no matter where's, you can get whatever you need for the same fair price! That's good to hear. Eleanor, give the nice turtles that smile he so desires. I'm sure running a business is hard work. Hang in there! M much obliged! the way you were talking, it seemed like you had an idea of who was behind the riot. What happened here? I think someone in your position would know. There were reports of a large riot, but I was caught up in chasing you, so I heard little else. It was a small affair, really. Velvet Rokuro and I were being held on this island. 
Velvet instigated the other prisoners to riot so that we could escape. She used the prisoners? Yeah. You'd expect different from me? <sighs> How did it end? We didn't stay to see, but the prisoners were losing badly. At least, that's what it looked like. But if that was the case, then where did all the exorcists go? I know Oscar left to report the incident, but the other guards should have remained at their posts. Well, if they didn't flee, we have to assume they were all killed. By this headless knight, perhaps? Well, no sense losing our heads, I suppose. But it looks like we're in for a heck of a fight. All we have to do is mop up anyone who's left. What was it called? Venomization, right? The dark ritual of making demons feed on each other to birth stronger ones. Aizen, how many demons does the ritual require? It's more a matter of quality than quantity. Stronger demons mean more powerful malevolence. The ritual mixes the victor's malevolence with that of the devoured, creating a terrible, bloodthirsty monster. You see, the newfound power comes at a great cost. With it, the victor's last vestiges of self-control are stripped away. So it's something even more than a monster. A seething ball of pure power and malevolence. Roguro, don't tell me you're considering it for yourself. Of course I am. I'll consider anything that can make me stronger. You cannot be serious! What's there to be so surprised about? Well, look at Velvet. She's already eaten countless demons. You're ridiculous! He's right. If it helps me find my vengeance, I don't care. Velvet? Wait. Are you really going to do it? Relax. It's not gonna happen. Becoming a monster wouldn't bother me. But when I defeat my rival, I have to be myself for it to mean anything. It's the same for Velvet. It is? Besides, if I kill a previous victor of the ritual, I'll have proved myself strong enough not to need the extra power. You're ridiculous. Night. You must be the product of the venomization. Well, he definitely looks vicious enough. <laughs> Not as vicious as our velvet, though. Oh, <laughs> 
Takes care of that. Yeah. I feel something again. More malevolence? No, another Earth Pulse point. It must be on this island. I sense it too. It's very close. Directly underneath us, I would guess. What is this place? Welcome to the most secure cell in the entire complex. The darkest hole in Titania. Feel anything, Lafayette? Yeah, I think this is the Earth Pulse Point. If this cell is where the Earth Pulse Point is, then does that mean it housed a Therian? Yeah, and a real hungry one at that. Every day, they would toss demons into its cell. It would devour its fill, then wipe the blood from its lips. Never once realizing, it was delivering to Inominat the malevolence of hundreds of demons and prisoners. And then one day, there appeared before it a female Moloch, who shattered the barrier and freed the Therian from its cage. But the Therian knew no mercy, and it devoured its liberator. And it was then... It was then I obtained the power. The power to avenge my brother! Velvet... You're a Therian? This prison island was a feeding ground for the Therian, harnessing the malevolence created by the prisoners within. But because Velvet escaped, the malevolence went out of control. Wow, the same darn thing that happened back in Kamoana's village. Lord Artorius would never have done such a thing. No, what's so unbelievable? That he used his wife's brother as a human sacrifice? That he imprisoned his wife's sister? Because that's what your damned holy shepherd did! All to get his hands on Inominat's power! I'm sure he... he had a reason for... A reason?! To spare the world of its pain! Don't give me that! Who will spare my brother's pain? Who will soothe my brother's despair? He murdered my little brother, Luffy! Then you'll stand there and tell me it was for the greater good?! <sighs> At any rate, that's one less Therian for us to track down. Velvet. What? Did Velvet yell at you so hard you're starting to hear voices now? I have a feeling something's wrong. Kamoana could be in danger. But we already beat the Headless Knight. I still can't shake this feeling. Please, let's go back and check on them.
Velvet is a Therian, is she? I knew there was something off about her. But it's what she cried out that's really on my mind. Laffy said, is Velvet truly Lord Artorius's younger sister? She never told me. If it were true, I suppose it would explain her knowledge of Lord Artorius's training. If you're so curious, why not ask her yourself? Hey Velvet, what's your connection to Artorius? Uh, Rokuro, have some tact! I heard you whispering. It doesn't bother me. Artorius was married to my late sister, Selica. He was our brother-in-law. We lived together for more than ten years. That does explain a few things. So he sacrificed his little brother and turned his sister into a Therian. But... you were his family. To his view of the grand scheme, family is inconsequential. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. All he did was act according to his ideal logic. <sighs> well, enough chit-chat. Let's get moving. Turns out that Velvet is a Therian who consumes malevolence. And too much malevolence is what changes people into demons. Strong enough malevolence can persist after the person who created it dies, turning their corpse or spirit into a raging monster. That's how undead and phantom demons come about. Then the demons Velvet killed turned back into humans because she devoured their malevolence. Yeah, and consequently, they avoided becoming undead or anything like that. So she saved them. Well, I mean, a corpse is a corpse, of course, of course. Do you think she could devour only the malevolence and turn a living demon human again? Unfortunately, that's impossible due to malevolence's self-reinforcing nature. When Therians are connected to Enominot through an Earth Pulse point, they seem to be able to absorb small concentrations of malevolence from the surrounding area and inhibit the creation of new demons. But any human who builds up enough malevolence to turn into a demon will keep producing malevolence as long as they live. That's right. To devour any malevolence, I need to cut it off at the source. That's how my powers work. Velvet, I'm sorry. I don't mind it. Actually, I find it convenient. This way, I'll never forget my hatred for Artorius. Plus, as long as you stay away from an Earth Pulse point, you get to keep the power of any malevolence you consume. Fuel for my hatred, yes. Uh. Sweetheart. A headless knight and a horse demon. It's giving off a ton of malevolence. This must be the true survivor of the venomization process. Oh, I get it. 
The dying exorcist lady wasn't saying headless knight is back. She was going for headless knight on horseback. Whatever the case, we'll fight whoever we have to to claim this island. <laughs> Now I can't help but wonder how the voice is made. Get close and look if you're that curious. Get the fuck out! Wall of 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 Wall
Venomization, all right. Definitely stronger than that headless lump of armor. 
I beg your pardon? Not you. <laughs> the demon from the villa? No, look! It's absorbing the malevolence! It's Ethereum! Actually, that hawk is Griffin, my one and only friend. <laughs> A damned Therian. So that's what Tabitha meant when she said we'd find out shortly. But your highness, why do you have a Therian? It's like I said, Griffin has been my dear friend ever since I was a child. Even if he's a Therian now, that hasn't changed. So you knew you were helping a Therian escape. What are you plotting? <sighs> I have no plots or schemes. I just want Griffin to be free. I guess we shouldn't be surprised. The crown prince and future king, he's gonna do whatever he likes. <laughs> I suppose I am at that. But if I am, it's the first time I've ever been allowed a choice of my own. When you're a prince, you're not a person. You're an institution, one designed to serve the state and its people. Say, for instance, you're doing your law studies and your back suddenly itches. What do you do? I mean, I'd scratch it. Who wouldn't? When I did that, my tutor gave me a whipping so hard the blood ran down my back. The reason being that I prioritized a personal feeling, that is to say my itch, over my studies in service of the state. Uh. Seeing Griffin lay claim to the skies, let me imagine my own freedom. It was my lone solace over the years. But then, he turned out to be responsive to Inominat's power. I take it the Midgand royal family is well aware that the Abbey is creating Therians? Of course. How could we not? The Kingdom offers unequivocal support to Shepherd Artorius's vision of reason and will. Even so, if there was one thing I could never permit, it was seeing Griffin locked up and unable to fly. Never. I tricked the exorcist on guard and disabled the barrier. But then Griffin attacked the exorcist and killed him. That's why you said you could never go back. Eh, they can overlook a single dead exorcist, but with Ethereum removed, malevolence will engulf the capital. I knew full well what I was doing. And yet, I couldn't watch my friend's life be stripped away. Your Highness. He chose a single bird over the world. Why do you think that birds fly? Uh, that's what Lord Artorius asked me. My anatomy book says birds can fly because their bones are light and their wing muscles are enormously strong. Birds fly because a bird that cannot fly is no bird at all. That's what I think. I understand now. As long as you remain on this island, you may do as you please. But if you try to escape, I'll kill you. That should work. This way we'll have him on hand if we ever need a hostage. Understood. I appreciate you letting Griffin and me stay here. Well, now that that's taken care of, let's build ourselves a hideout. Hey, Velvet, do you know where Eleanor is? Wasn't she just playing with you? Yeah, but then she left. I'm worried because she looked pretty sad. Can you go find her? Why me? Mm. All right, all right, fine. Just don't cry on me, okay? <laughs> 